everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and happy Sunday, January 21st of 2024. Now I have a journal full of notes and it feels a little bit mishmashy and I don't even know what I'm going to call this video yet. It doesn't have kind of a major theme that I try to have whenever I put out a video. So my main goal today is just to provide some insight into some of the things that I've been thinking that hopefully I can flow off into your day and into your week that can give you a nugget of thought that can help you through whatever it is you're going through. Now you might be in a super good place. You might be in a place where you're on the top of the world and you see everything that's going on, but you've gotten yourself out of it energetically and spiritually and emotionally, and you are carrying on in a creative, beautiful manner. And I hope, I hope that yeah, that's where you are. And here's the thing, I find myself dipping in and out, in and out of that in a, in a pretty interesting roller coaster kind of a way. And I think that's why I have so, such, a, such an odd mishmash of notes because I carried my journal around with me all week this week because I kept, ha kept having these things that would, a thought that would come into my mind that was like, oh my gosh, I need to write that down and remember that. So, because when I go back and look at this stuff, um, that when I get these little downloads of in, inf uh, information and inspiration and motivation and you know these things that were given by our higher self, our creator, sometimes they leave us. And this is why having some place to write this stuff down is really, really important. In fact, I used up the rest of this particular journal. Uh, this journal is now uh, closed after this and I'll start a new one uh, this week. So. One of the first things that I actually was thinking of, and with the, you know with the situation that I have going on, and it's still <clears throat> still pretty fresh actually. Um, I it brought up there's big actually, and I'm going to just share with you uh, what I wrote down here first. So about four years ago, maybe maybe five years ago, I had a really vivid dream. Now many of you know that I carry on the work of my dad. He was a he was a brilliant botanist. Um, he was a little bit underground with what he did. You know, he had a real mistrust for um, the government, and he had a mistrust of the, you know, the medical system. Not really a mistrust of it, but he really felt like his mission was to help people understand that their body knows how to heal. When you, we go back to Mother Nature, we go back to things that are natural, we stop putting chemicals in our body and chemicals in our food and chemicals in our water and we stop destroying the way our air is. I mean, he understood these things really, really early on. And it, it, it caused him to not really live the freest, best life. And I know that some of you might be able to relate to that because it's very difficult to know things that are happening in the world that hurt humanity at maybe the expense of people who are trying to make, you know, they're a big business, maybe corporations that pollute, you know, my dad knew about all this stuff and he got really tired of watching humanity suffer. And I will tell you, this has been one of the things that's been a driving force for me uh, the whole time that I've been going because when my dad first passed away, it took me four years to restart his business. and. And, and my main goal was I wanted to get out of corporate America. I was working for um, a big fitness chain, a, a, you know, a chain of fitness centers. I was managing a club here in Salt Lake. And even though I love fitness and I love the members, the corporate piece of it was very, very difficult for me. And so after, about four years after my dad passed, I, you know, there's a whole story with me and another sister and how we, we were going to start it together and then what happened is um, I had this opportunity to restart my dad's company and my goal was twofold. I wanted first of all to be happy. I was so unhappy in corporate America and my second goal was to provide the formulas that my dad had formulated for myself and my siblings and then all of the kids that ensued from this huge family because a lot of us depended on my dad's formulas just in the way that we took care of ourselves. So we had reached a point where we'd used up most of the formulas that my dad had 
not just made, but tinctured and bottled. <clears throat> and at that point it was like, okay, you know, something has to give. And, and I was in the perfect position because my boys had just gotten out of high school. Um, they're both, they're a year apart. And so I was at this crossroad in my, in my career as, you know, running a gym and teaching classes. And, and I actually still taught classes. I actually kept teaching classes for uh, another 20 years after, after I restarted my dad's company. But my main goal was to be happy and to provide these formulas for my dad. And then as I've been going now, 22 years on my own, um, I realized the same thing my dad realized. I realized that there's a lot of unnecessary suffering in humanity and the way that people are guided to take care of their health. And I think that there are many good, amazing people in our healthcare system. I, I just think it's a little bit broken. And I believe that if I can help educate people and empower people. I don't even care if people buy anything from me. I really don't. My goal is to empower people to, to take responsibility and realize that Mother Nature provides all of the gifts for us. And that's one of the motivating factors that actually drew, drove me to redo my dad's book. You know, I published it last year in April. I self-published it. It was an update and a reformat and a total addition I added I doubled the content there were 48 plants in my dad's book I doubled it to 94 and while I'm on that topic basically um, my book got picked up by a publisher it's being republished in the spring um, of this year and to me if I can reach more people with information that empowers you to take care of your health the way that mother nature intended that is why I'm here that is my that is my entire purpose I believe that when I watch a light bulb go on in a young mom who's tired of chronic <clears throat> infections in their child or chronic whatever whatever it is, um, to be able to have the empowerment of knowing how to use a natural remedy and knowing you're, you're not only helping your child but you're doing no harm in that. You know, this is how humans have been taking care of themselves for centuries. For most of human nature, in fact, most human beings on this planet in 2024 most people still turn to mother nature first most people and that might seem kind of crazy because the western world is so advanced and we've got all of our you know medical technology and all of our fancy pharmaceuticals and <clears throat> all of that stuff but here's the thing this is how it's been and people when they, when they start to discover oh it's really not that hard and not just that we're designed for perfect wellness and that is one of the reasons that I updated my dad's book is because it's like, let's, let's make this up. You know, it's 45 years ago is when my dad published his book. It needed to be, it was a little antiquated. Now the information inside it, as far as the medicinal properties of the plants, a lot of the preparation methods, all that, that stuff doesn't change, but it needed to be updated. So to me, this, this is the purpose. And what are, so, okay, so I wrote down here, I had two vivid dreams about my dad. So about four or five years ago, I had this dream about my dad that he, because he was kind of underground with his business a little bit, um, I had this dream that my dad came, came that he had, he, he was not, he wasn't really dead. And the dream went on and on and on and I was I was positive it was real. It was the most crazy thing and I really never said anything to any of my siblings about it because it it shook me up a little bit. And um, I was I was sad that he wasn't alive and then I was like, okay, now what? Now what? Like I've been carrying on your work for all these years and what does that look like? It was like this it was it was a very very interesting thing because Partly in the dream, it was like my dad's like, okay, you know, I'm gonna take this back underground. And I'm just like, dad, no, I'm reaching so many people. And, and, and then, like I said, I woke up and I was like, holy cow. I, that was like, it, it left my heart racing because you hear about people that actually do that, that they will not, you know, you think that they died and they didn't really die. And, you know, I saw my dad in his, in his coffin, I, I saw him. And 
you never know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, last week I had the same exact dream. And he showed up in my dream with one of my brothers who's still alive. My brother is, you know, still very much here, but he, I think, looks the most like my dad. He loves the mountains and the plants and all of the things like my dad. I'm very close with his brother. He's a, hu he's a beautiful human being. And they showed up together. My dad would have been, I believe, uh, 86, eight, I believe he would be 86 or 87. Anyway, um, he showed up at that age. He showed up at the age that he would have been because my dad was very young, 62 when he passed. So, and this dream lasted much shorter. So I, I asked myself, what, does the, what is the meaning of this? Why would the same dream come in so real, so real, so, so real that I could, I, I could see my dad. I, I felt like I was with him and, and my brother. I felt like it was the craziest thing. So I wrote myself, uh, wrote this to myself after that. Um, well, here's what I wrote, uh, vivid and real. And then I wrote with a question mark, is this, is there a parallel timeline happening? And it was like, <laughs> who, who, who knows, right? So place my, I said, place yourself in a position where what you want is a real thing now. So I, I really had to ask myself after these really, especially the second vivid dream with my dad, I need to place myself in a position of what is it that I want right now? And here's what I would suggest for you. Think the same. What is it that you want right now? And then I, then I, then I wrote this, think of at least three other people that this thing you desire will benefit. And I wrote that and then immediately I wrote down like uh, about 40 people because they're all my family members that I'm super close to, um, that I know I affect in a positive way. And it was like, okay, wow, if, if the outcome that I, that I know will happen from whatever the situation is gonna tie itself up with, I know that I'm gonna still be in a position to benefit all these members of my family. And then what I actually wrote down is I wrote down the people in the world. So, you know, whatever that, whatever that means, right? So then what came through for me when I was writing this and I wrote down all these, these family members is that there, there's something I watched on a podcast a couple weeks ago about the law of three. And it has to do with, with manifestation. When you, when you want to manifest anything, right? So the first part is there's three things, what you think, what you feel, and what you do. So you can't just think something and, you know, law of attraction it into your awareness, into your life, because you're just thinking about it. So then you not only have to think what you think, but what do you feel? Because you need to put some emotional power behind it. You need to think, what is it that I feel? What do I think? What do I feel? What am I feeling behind what I want to manifest? And then the third thing is, what do you do? What is it that you do? You must put action into place. <clears throat> you can't just think about something, feel the emotions of something, and then not do anything. You must take action. That is the law of three when it comes to manifesting, you know, what it is that you want. <clears throat> now, the second piece of the manifestation of of three is what you give, what you receive, and what you intend. So this is, this is a beautiful group of three. So think about that. What is it that you give? What do you give? We all know that when we give, and we give unconditionally, you know, not like, yeah, I'm gonna give this to you and you're gonna give this to me because I'm giving this to you. It's unconditional giving. And it's, it's like un unconditional forgiving. You forgive because it's good for you. That's what you receive. When you forgive, you forgive someone for something they did, for, did to you or perceived did to you. When you forgive that person, you're actually giving yourself a bigger gift. So that is what you receive. So what you give, what do you give? And you can put this out into anything that you like. This can be something physical. This can be something emotional. This can be something spiritual. This can be anything. The second thing is, what is what do you receive? Because when there's a giving, there's always a receiving. There's many people who shun receiving, and because they don't want to bother another person, or 
you know, let people give to you so that you can receive. You know, this is a beautiful part of, of being a human, having this experience. And then the final piece of this particular manifestation of three is what is it that you intend? What do you intend? What's your intention behind giving? Is there an intention to receiving? You know, these are really beautiful things to think about. This is something you could even spend a little bit of time writing down, right? Right. You know, I hope you're journaling by now because this is an empowering part of walking through these times. You know, we're three weeks in to January of 2024. And wow, I, I think every single day things are just going crazy and it's, it's, it's amazing. <clears throat> so then I wrote this, <clears throat> don't speak don't speak it when like don't speak in the past tense and don't speak in the present tense and i, I wrote that a little more convoluted but <clears throat> in order to manifest you always must speak in the present tense so you know don't say you know it, so just think about that it's, don't you know when you speak and and even <clears throat> if you can think in a present sense not just speak in it but think in it um because it's always like, well, this is what happened in the past and this is why I'm staying stuck. And it might even just be something that happened yesterday. It might be something that happened to you when you were a kid. And don't think, well, when this thing happens in the future, then things are gonna be better for me. You know, when my husband is nicer to me, when my kids grow up, when my mother-in-law is not so crabby, <clears throat> whatever it may be, when I get a different job, when I don't have a job, you know, there's, there's a million scenarios because there's a million of us here and you're talking about something that's happening in the future and you're keeping yourself stuck in the place where you really should be present. So if you can change the words that you say and the things that you want to manifest, speak about them in the present tense. And this is, this is something that really came into me really strongly. Like, you know, I've been thinking to myself with this, with this situation I have going on, I think, what could have I done different in the past? What could have I done different to avoid this or to make it look like I did something that I didn't? Or, you know, and so my brain, so I have to pull myself, like I have to pull myself up to here. And then I think, you know, how fast can we get to the future so this will all be over? <laughs> and in the meantime, what I, what I am realizing that I need to be in the present moment because there are some things for me to learn here, to experience here, to be so grateful for here in this place. Um, I, the gratitude that's been flowing out of me this past week especially is absolutely indescribable. When you put yourself in a place of pure gratitude for the present moment, the people that you love, <clears throat> the people who love you, all of that, it changes absolutely everything. And it's a beautiful state of being. And I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that a lot of this is happening so that I can build my character and take, take what I know and what I share and take it out into a further, into a further realm of people that, that might need a, a little bit of motivation that I can give. You know, I, I believe that when my, my book comes out in the spring with this new publisher, um, you know, I believe that I'm going to, I'm, I feel so ready and so excited to share this knowledge with more people um, that can just, you know, the more people that can take their power back using their physical body and getting it as, as healthy as possible, um, that is a beautiful thing. So, <clears throat> so here's what I wrote about, about this. When you speak in the pres in a present tense, the universe always creates the present. So when you speak and, and you're speaking, I am here now, this is the now, this is what's happening now, be here now, all of that, the universe unwraps that and you get this gorgeous gift because your your brain is present, your your mind, your mind is, is here and in the now. And this has been really helpful for what I'm ha what's what I'm going through right now because it's like look at this gift I have, look at this gift I have. And I, and I really believe that what happens is we always think about the worst case scenario. 
right? That's the, that's the way the, our human brains work. So <clears throat> one of the things that I've, that's really been important for me is I've, I've, I need to stay in creation mode. And yeah, I've, I've been creating a ton. It's like I'm either cleaning or creating something. I'm painting, I'm drawing, I have this little doodle habit I do because I'm not a TV watcher. <clears throat> and when I'm not doing my work, and I've, I've been able to do some pretty cool pivots with, you know, so that we can stay in business. And, uh, you know, we have a brand new antiviral blend that dropped, you know, dropped in as a beautiful inspiration uh, that'll be ready next month. Um, and it's, this would have never come to creation if the situation I'm going through hadn't happened. And, and so many other beautiful things, right? So tune into your creative gifts using your connection with source, creator, or God. You know, whatever you call God, the creator, source energy, um, whatever, whatever, you know, that creative force that you have. Um, and here's one piece. I'm going to pipe this in again because I've been alcohol free for a long time, for a while now. And every single day that goes by um, that I, and I, I think I've reached a point, you know, in fact, I can actually kind of say this with certainty, that part of my life is done. And I've never had a, what I would consider an issue, uh, drinking alcohol, uh, mostly a nice glass of wine on a pretty regular basis. But, but the clarity that you get um, when you take that piece of um, what, there's nothing redeeming about, about alcohol of any kind. And I will tell you, if you can tap into that, if you're in a good place, to actually possibly separate maybe from a friendship base that counts on that or pressures you when you're there or you feel like you can't imbibe when you're with them. Um, it might be time to really change up some of these things because there are creative things inside of you that I believe staying stuck in the alcohol loop keeps you, keeps you stuck there. And there's some things that need to come out that, that, that are gifts that the universe needs and humanity needs from you. So after I wrote that, you know, tune into your creative gifts using your connection to God. Um, I actually wrote down a list of things that that I was a yes or no on this, a yes or no on this, things that have just been rolling around in my brain. And I, and I got, right when I wrote those down, I went right down the line and wrote yes, no, yes, 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 no, yes. And I got absolute clarity right in that moment. and. And then what happens is truth bumps, right? Have you ever heard something? Uh, someone says something or you're in a situation and your scalp prickles up or your, you know, the hair stand up on the back of your neck or you get, you kind of get chill bumps a little bit. Those are truth bumps. That means when you hear something that is true and it resonates with the deepest part of your soul, it's like you get goosebumps. That, that, is, that is what happened when I went down this list. So then I wrote this, and this is just kind of a, a random list that just kind of came through. The people, the friends, the support, the love, the knowing, the awakening, the freedom, the sovereignty, the tribe, the grace, the purpose, the sisters, the family. You know, this is, this is, this is what makes life, right? Regardless of what happens, regardless of the uncertainty of the year 2024, for all the stuff that's happening in the world with the politics and the government and you know the World Economic Forum and all the stuff that we dip into and look at, right? Um, regardless of all of that, all the things that are coming, to me the timeline in a way is speeding up. Things are happening so fast and when that happens, to me that makes time slow down because we can take the first three weeks of January of 2024 and all of this stuff that's happened in the first three weeks might typically have happened in a whole year. So we are slowing down time as humanity speeds forward toward this beautiful place of heaven on earth, which we can create right now. It's right now. It, and if I can say that in, in where I'm at in my life right now, then, then I'm, I hope for you that you can say the same. So remember not to lose yourself when times are tough or super tough. Remember not to lose that core of who you are. Um, 
there are so many gorgeous, beautiful souls out there. And I've connected with so many of you. And I'm so grateful. And when the times are tough, no matter what you're going through, you know, and I've talked, exchanged emails with a couple of lovely people. In fact, Marissa, if you're watching this, you know, Marissa, you're one of my favorite people to get an email from when you listen to this. And I know you've had some tough times and it's easy to get caught in, you know, maybe the pain our physical body feels, or maybe a, a financial decision that shouldn't have been made, or maybe the loss of a loved one, or, you know, we all have these things that are tough. So remember not to lose who you are as you walk through this life. In fact, um, my niece spent, uh, my 11 year old niece came and spent this last week with me because her mom, who's, so this is my great niece, her mom, who's my niece, um, was doing some big jujitsu certification and she came and stayed a week with me, this sparkly little, you know, 11 year old. And we painted and we did all kinds of things. But her dad came and picked her up yesterday, which was Saturday. And um, they live uh, four hours from me. So they, uh, you know, they stayed overnight. He stayed overnight after, before he picked her up. And one of the things that he said that was really cool when we were having this conversation uh, last night, he said, it, sometimes when you're talking to somebody, it, you, you, they simply glow. They don't, they, they can have a face full of wrinkles. They can have, you know, they can be a person who's maybe not what the world would consider the most beautiful, physical, beautiful person. But there are people who glow and are so beautiful because their soul is so shiny and their character is so beautiful. And we were actually talking about that because his wife, who's my niece, um, she's one of those people. And I mean, as far as she is, besides she is physically gorgeous and she's, she's extremely fit because she just, she's now just got certified where she can actually teach jujitsu, which is a, no small feat for a pretty petite woman. She's a pr pretty petite woman. Um, but we were talking about how she glows and how she's so beautiful. And that just, the conversation just expanded to the fact that there are some people who, regardless of what they look like, physically as far as what the modern world or the Western world mostly, what is considered beautiful. And they are so beautiful because they glow from inside. So remember not to lose yourself during the tough times. And, and, and I'm sure you know those people that, and you might be one of those people. Um, this is what I strive toward. I strive to lot, not let myself get caught in these lower energies of, you know, fear and anger and you know, if I do dip into there, I pull myself out as quickly as possible. So when someone is going through something exceptionally hard, please check in, in with them periodically. Our initial response and support is appreciated, but then we get busy with our own lives. So I wrote this because I'm like, I need to really pay attention to that because, you know, where I am right now, the check-ins that I get from a couple of my siblings uh, are really, they're like a lifeline. And it reminds me that we see someone going through something really, really hard, you know, and you know, like my, one of my sisters, uh, lost, lost a son, uh, about two and a half years ago. And even though it was hard for all of us, um, it, it's, you know, she's never really gotten over that. I mean, time heals wounds, so they don't quite hurt so much but she still wants to talk about him all the time. And she still wants, she gets emotional and she can break down and have massive tears just thinking about him. And, and that reminds me that I need to check in sometimes, you know, and when people have something super hard going on, you know, be aware of, of you know, of, of the situation that someone might not have been able to process maybe as fast as you have, because it's a little bit more closer to them. You know, and I wrote that just because um, I've, I've experienced, you know, people that I love that are, che that are continually checking in with me and it's very much appreciated. So here's another thing that really kind of, <laughs> I think is really big. Uh, 2020 hit, you know, I felt like I, you know, could see the BS that was happening around 
the pandemic. It felt like BS to me. Um, and I saw people give away their freedoms. I saw, you know, I saw things that just threw me into an absolute tailspin. And all during 2020, after, after the whole thing really hit hard, and through most of 2021 as well, and even into 2022, I responded to people I love less than stellar. And it's because I didn't know, it's uncertainty makes us do crazy things. And when we also see people responding to big world events differently than we would respond. And right now what I'm telling myself is, and this is what I wrote, in hindsight, regarding 2020, what would I do differently? If, if I, I think the, the problem is that we don't like the uncertainty of something. So we respond maybe with quick judgment. We, re, we snap at someone. We, you know, I, I, this has been a big one for me because there's, there were people very, like I said, very close to me that had different views of what was happening. And um, I am less proud of some of the, you know, some of the ways that I responded. And was it always that way through the whole thing? No, no. And it was really with people that I was super close to, which I guess were always hardest on the people we're close to, right? So when you want to show up big in the world, you've got to push through the hard stuff. Yeah. That's what I wrote. So then I wrote, keep sharing the message, rise up and let's help each other, you know? So when you want to show up big in the world, you've got to push through the hard stuff. Keep sharing your message, rise up and let's help each other. So the nature of change is this. It has to be with small baby steps. You, you, we've been hearing this forever and there's a reason. You know, unless something dramatic happens, you know, I, I've seen people completely change their life around and their health around when something dramatic happens. You know, with my first, my first marriage, uh, there was alcohol involved. The divorce, after the divorce happened, that was a big enough change for my ex-husband that he became sober. And that's been a long, 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 long time now because I've been married to my second husband for 25 years in a couple months. So um, sometimes these hard things that come at us can give us the jump start we need to make a dramatic change. Not always. So if you're a person who is not in a place where you've something really horrible has been thrown at you, remember that there's, that it's always takes baby steps. Maybe like with the alcohol thing, you know, there, there might be a deeper thing that you need to, to tackle. Cause here's the thing. What happens is we think that alcohol takes the edge off of stress that we might feel, but you might not realize that what's happening is alcohol is actually causing you stress. Alcohol causes stress. It's a neurotoxin. It's bad for your sleep, your sleep habits. It's, you know, so that that's, I'm just throwing that in there because I, I do think that we're, we're at this point where the more creative and the more present we can be, the better. And when you edge out your creativity and your presence with alcohol, you think you're taking stress off and you think you're just being part of a social, social construct that make is, is the right way to do it. You know, I would, I would encourage any of you to, you know, some of you might be in dry January. I guess it's, I guess it's a thing, you know, where you go the, after you party hard all through the holidays, then it's like you take the month of January off and then it's like, well, okay, you're doing it for a month. It shows I don't have a problem. Um, and then, but it's looking forward to when February 1st comes, it's like, okay, then, then I can start drinking again. So I, I feel really pulled to, to share that message with you um, because it's, it's very impactful for me being completely clear. Um, you know, the gifts that you can share and the clarity that you can have on your purpose here is it's, it's difficult to describe if you haven't experienced it, if you've always kind of been a person who just kind of socially drinks alcohol on a regular basis. <clears throat> so I would encourage you to take a look at that if it resonates with you and the timing is right, etc. So the baby steps include who you hang out with. Don't, don't be afraid to start with making, by making small improvements very gently. And, I'm, and this is about anything. This is about, you know, maybe 
taking herbs and adding them into your routine. I tell you, I've talked to so many people over the years who are completely overwhelmed with the idea of, of you know, starting to use herbs and herbal supplements uh, or even changing their lifestyle thing like maybe drinking more tea or adding more vegetables into your diet. It, it can be really, really overwhelming because I think our human brain thinks, well, I need to do this fast. And unless you've been diagnosed with something serious, well, yeah, the, the, the reason to do something fast and make a dramatic change is very, very important. You might not need to do that. So be gentle. Be gentle with yourself. You know, and if you mess up, you know, <laughs> jump back on. Your body's very forgiving. You know, when my niece was here uh, this past week, we went into a craft store, and on the way out with the, to the checkout, there was all the candy. I never do that. Very, very rarely. Well, we she asked if I, she could get a candy bar, and I was like, oh my gosh, a Snickers actually sounds kind of good. I haven't had a Snickers in years. I don't even remember when. So I ate a Snickers bar with my niece, and it was delicious. And I didn't beat myself up on any, and I don't feel like I fell off the wagon. Um, the thing is, when you do it every single day, that becomes a problem, right? So stop going in search of willpower. Now, I love this, okay? Instead, and I actually heard this from, um, I, I think he's from Scotland. He's a, he's a gentleman who's going around, he's been going around for 10 years, uh, I think his platform is called One Year No Beer or something like that. He's for 10 years been helping people um, stop drinking. And one of the things that he said is stop going in search of willpower. Instead, search for connection, support, accountability, and education. So willpower is like a muscle. It'll eventually just give out on you. In fact, my nephew Ben, who many of you are familiar with, uh, ben Benjamin Hardy, he wrote a book, one of his first books was called Willpower Doesn't Work. Because like I just said, it's like your willpower is a muscle. And once the, once you use it and use it and use it and you just fatigue it, um, it can eventually give out. And you need to put yourself in these situations. To me, your environment is such a huge uh, piece of you staying on whatever your weapon looks like. So, um, so search for the tools that can help you change. So um, this is what I'm going to end with because this is the last page of this, of this particular journal. I had no idea the impact it would have on my life when I finally made the, cha when I finally make the changes that I knew. You know, like I don't think any of us have any idea the impact of some of these decisions, like the creativity you bring to the world. Um, you might not have any idea the impact of what you can bring to the world is. And I don't care how young you are or how old you are. It does not matter. You know, one of my sisters um, was in a horrific car accident. This year will be 20 years ago. And um, I look back on all these last 20 years and how she never complains about pain. She is one of the most giving, kind, loving, human beings on the planet. Her character is beautiful and deep. And talk about people who glow, she just glows. And to me, this is the thing. We, we have this gift of this life and to be able to bring it out and even make a difference in our, I mean, that's why we're all here, to make a difference for not just ourselves, but our families, our communities, to gain the spiritual warrior that we all are. You know, I, I believe that, you know, what ha is happening is, is on a spiritual level because as human conscious, as this beautiful consciousness, the pure potential that we have could change the systems so fast. And that's why I believe we're in a great awakening, right? So the only thing is, is you don't ever want to say to yourself, I wish I had done it sooner. And that's what I wrote. I wanted to remind myself you know, divided this beautiful journal. Actually, I, I don't throw these away, but this one has been, you know, you, if you look through this, like pages and pages and pages of just beautiful reflections. In fact, every once in a while, I'll go back to an old journal and I'll just kind of read through it. And I'm like, wow, those are some really good things that came through. And I believe they're things that are coming through from our higher self. 
So I still don't know what I'm going to name this particular video, but um, maybe just a mishmash of thoughts, right? But thanks for listening, you guys. Um, I do hope that there was something in there that maybe triggered a spark of creativity, a spark of a, a deeper purpose, a spark of taking this life in the present moment to the next level. Because, you know, numbing ourselves out with different things, whether it be alcohol or food or diff any, any t anything that you can't step away from that is like an addiction, is keeping you from your highest potential and your highest creativity. And what you can bring to the world. It, it might be something that you think is super, super small. And to be honest, it doesn't matter. Because I love to say, remember quantum entanglement. You put even something small, like throw a teeny tiny pebble into a very still pond and it's gonna put a huge ripple out. It doesn't matter how small. It could be you walk through your life saying kind words to strangers. It could be that simple. And that tiny thing is bigger than you think, much bigger than you think. So I hope your week ahead is beautiful. Um, I'm grateful to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm grateful for my lessons that I am learning because I know there's a lot of beauty that's coming out of it. Um, <clears throat> I know that, uh, that some of the gifts that I needed to bring to the world couldn't have happened unless, unless I go through unless I go through this. So I'm, I'm dissolving it into the best outcome for everyone. So I hope your day is, is awesome, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.